Welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere with your host, Chris Parker. And welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere. This is Chris Parker, and I have a guest on today that when we connected last week, I think we somehow it came up that um, we might be professional soulmates. And uh, that was a, uh, at least that's what I remember from our, our, our conversation, that there's a lot of similarities in spirit. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of the conversation. Before we get into that, I would like to highlight that it is Movember. During the month of November, people all over around the world are raising awareness for um, mental and physical health, and not only of men's health, but during this crazy corona time, I think, you know, mental health for anyone. So what I'm asking on every one of these episodes, if you haven't spoken to someone you care about recently, give them a shout, tell them you're there, see how they're doing, um, and just, just, you know, maybe that's what someone needs today is just a... A, uh, a nice call from a nice person. So in the spirit of November, call someone and tell them that you care. I am here with Luisa Mendoza, and she's coming in from New York. Uh, we have a number of things in common, um, including Boston EXO and the Open EXO community, and she's doing so much more than that. So Luisa, thank you for joining. Can you please share with us what is it that you do and why do you do what you do? Well, Chris, first of all, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. And I loved your intro. Um, and I think it's so important to take a moment and reach out to a loved one because everybody's going through so much this year. And um, it's a perfect segue in terms of what am I doing and why, right? I think the ultimate question we all have for ourselves is why. And so um, this year, <laughs> you know, I'm glad I can laugh now. <laughs> Let's just say that because, wow, what a year. Um, back in January, um, it was probably the best month of my life. Um, and why do you ask, right? Well, I finally took the biggest leap in my career. Um, it was my long time dream to be an entrepreneur. Um, I think I shared with you my first time being an entrepreneur was when I was five and I wanted mm -hmm. to buy my mother a gift for Mother's Day. Um, we didn't have money back then and you know we had just moved to Colombia from the um, from we had just moved to the United States from Colombia and um, times were tough, you know um, first generation in this country and I went door to door selling my dolls and my books to my neighbor saying, would you like to buy one so I could buy my mom a gift for Mother's Day? And they're like, oh, that's so sweet. Keep the doll, keep the book. And, you know, um, here's some money. And I was like, 100% profit. I do not fall in love with business. Hmm. <laughs> so fast forward um, in January, after 20 years of, of experience working in the tourism industry, um, and working for the sports industry. Uh, most recently, I had been senior director of tourism development for New York City. I was responsible for Spain and all of Latin America, promoting this amazing destination, um, which is on many people's bucket list. And then I had the opportunity to go work for the Brooklyn Nets for the NBA um, as their uh, global director of tourism development. And that was a hard decision because my dream job was working at NYC and company, the official tourism office for New York. So when I was approached by the Brooklyn Nets, I was like, thank you, but no, thank you. <laughs> and so uh, 
long story short is that I really started to see a huge gap between sports and tourism. Um, when I was working with the Brooklyn Nets, I had an opportunity to speak to all of the sports teams in the U S at a conference called IPW. And I shared with them, I'm like, listen, guys, um, sports is super competitive. It's the nature of the game, but when it comes to tourism, we're a family. And if we work together, we're actually going to win because people that are traveling from overseas, if they come to the United States and they have a great time seeing a basketball game, if they come to New York, then the next time they go to Miami, guess what's going to be on their agenda? A basketball game. So I gave them stats. 38% of international travelers want to come and see a sporting event. It's part of our culture. They want to experience that. We know that right now, the thing that, well, before COVID, when people were traveling, that was one of the biggest tourism trends was travel like a local. People wanted to see the authentic experiences. And nothing is more authentic than sporting events in the United States and for that matter, anywhere in the world. So I launched my company. I was on uh, Univision, which is one of the largest networks in the United States for the Hispanic demographic. Um, first Latina, Hispanic female in the United States to start a tourism and sports company. And um, I mean, we were, it couldn't have been a better start. And then as we all know, <laughs> I'll never forget this. Um, I was in Manhattan. It was March 12th. I was with a business partner. We went to dinner and the restaurant owner came out and he was like, yeah, we've never seen like ever the restaurant this empty. We're probably going to shut down, you know? And, um, he said to me, how about you? Are you going to be okay? Like, what do you do for a living? And I just gave him my business card and it said, founder and CEO, GTSE, global tourism, sports and entertainment. He goes, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be you right now. <laughs> so, um, long story short is that, you know, as Steve Jobs says, I know, <laughs> like really, right? Um, long story is that Steve Jobs always says, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backward. And today, November 3rd, when I look back at 2020, I could look at it one of two ways. I could look at it like, oh my God, how come was it that the year I decided to start my company, the world decided to take a great pause? Or I could look at it and say, wow, what a year of reflection. What a year of overcoming so many things. I personally got COVID-19 back in March. I became super ill. And I guess when your life is on the borderline between, am I going to make it? At that point, you realize that the most important thing is your health. Because if you can wake up in the morning and you can open your eyes and you can breathe and your feet can touch the ground, everything else is icing on the cake. Literally, that's mm. how bad I got. So once I started recovering and I started getting better, I started thinking to myself, okay, I started walking. I started jogging. I'm on a mission to finish 500 miles this year. I'm at like 410 right now. So we're almost there. But I started thinking Tony Robbins. Oprah Winfrey, Elon Musk, Mark Cuban. These people just kept on coming up to me. I listened to a lot of their podcasts. I, I'm a firm believer that what you hear is what you think. What you think is what you do. And what you do is the, the, the person you become and the legacy you leave behind. So I always try to listen to great podcasts, the people that inspire me. And those are, you know, some of my role models. And so in all of this, I realized that they all have a diversified portfolio that none of them have all of their eggs in one basket. And of course, they're all self-made millionaires and billionaires. But you look at Mark Cuban, you know, he owns a, a sports team. He's on Shark Tank and a million other things. Tony Robbins is up to like 800 and something companies last that I checked. And so all of this made me think, you cannot just put all of your eggs in one basket. You have to diversify your portfolio. So it was like, what does that mean? So in the midst of all of this happening, I, for the first time, get an email on LinkedIn that Purpose Alliance is doing a global challenge for COVID-19. I was sick. I didn't know at the time that I had COVID. I was just really sick on this call. If you ever go back in here to the recordings, I am so sorry. <laughs> but um, I got to meet Eric Patel with Boston EXO. And back then there was no Boston EXO. But we just really connected and clicked. And, and I knew there was something about 
Boston EXO eventually once we started talking about it and the whole EXO community, right? And thinking exponential and thinking, well, why was it that Netflix was able to thrive and Blockbuster went out of business? Why is it that Airbnb just came in and disrupted the hotel industry? And I think we're living in an era right now where disruption is key and, um, and, and, and life is changing like on a daily basis. And so I guess one thing for us for global tourism, sports and entertainment, we took out what the meaning was and we just put a little plus sign and we said GTSC plus. And what that means is that I said, what are we really good at? And so my team and I, I know our strengths are digital marketing, which is web development, SEO optimization, um, retargeting that part of it, social media, and then public relations, specifically with the U.S. Hispanic market. It's a trillion dollar buy-in market. Most people want to tap into that market, have no idea, but we, our team is able to do that. And then I realized that you could try to do all of, I can make sure you have the best website and I can put your story on headline news because our whole motto is creating events that are meaningful and create headline news. Um, and so really I said, but if the core, if the executive leadership team doesn't have an aligned purpose, a vision, and understand why they're there and what their purpose is, their why, then what are we really doing? I don't want to waste their time and their money. I want us to really get to the root of it. So this is where GTSC Plus was born. We're actually in the process of doing our website right now, and we have our first client. Um, I think it's also important to note that in the midst of all of this, the one thing that I just kept on triggering in my mind was, as of course, you know, being very, very diligent of how I was spending money was uh, Mark Cuban is the one that always says the best investment you can ever make is the one you make on yourself. And so I made sure that I, you know, invested and I hired a professional business coach that would help me in this time because I was like, what do I do? Like, do I go back to corporate America? Do I continue as an entrepreneur? And um, it was the best thing I could have done because he was really the one that said, listen, you can apply your skill set into other industries. And so it's, uh, as you can see, it's been a long year, but an amazing year. And I've just learned that when life throws you lemons, uh, you can either get sour or you can make lemonade. And if you're an entrepreneur, you can make a lemonade stand. So I'm, I'm making lemonade stands these days, Chris. <laughs> right on. Thank you for that. There's, there's um, yeah, it's a beautiful story. And, and I, I'd like to dive one step deeper into the why and, and, you know, before when we've spoken, um, you also shared with me that, um, being there for your parents is actually part of your, your fundamental motivation. Can you share a little bit about that? If you're, if you're yeah, willing? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh that's something I always uh, enjoy speaking about because um, my parents were very successful in Colombia, um, in Bogota. My father was like a promotion away from becoming the, the president at the bank where he worked. And my mom was an entrepreneur and, in their late 50s, 40s, they realized that Colombia at the time in the 80s had a very, um, it was just the, the economics and the political climate were not uh, promising. And so my parents decided to leave everything and come to the United States so that their little girl could have a chance at the American dream. And when you go overnight, seeing your parents dress in business suits and, you know, my father, like getting his shoes polished every day and having, you know, his assistant help him and so forth to coming to this country and having to clean houses and office buildings and working three, four jobs, trying to make ends meet. Although I was only four years old, it's something that stuck very clear with me that this was a hard lifestyle. My parents had to select, like they picked so I could have the American dream. And so very early on, I was about eight, nine years old when I remember saying to my parents and just like having to go clean a house on a Saturday. And, and I just said to them, I said, listen, guys, um, you guys gave up a beautiful lifestyle in Colombia and you moved here for me so that I could have the American dream. And that's going to be my push. That's going to be my why. You guys are going to be my 
anchor that I am. You're my North star to make sure that I give you guys an American dream retirement. And, um, you know, about four years ago, I bought my house here in New York and just yesterday I went downstairs and, you know, I, I, have, I have a two story home and, and my dad was watching TV and I go, daddy, I want to be you when I grow up, you know, <laughs> like you're just saying, you know, watching TV now, taking care of my daughter who's 11 now, but um, they're my, they're my rock. They're my foundation. So is my daughter, you know, I'm a single mom and she's uh, you know, she's just so much fun right now. And she's always been a delight in my life. And so I really think family for me is, so important and that's been a huge why and although i have to tell you chris i was challenged the other day with someone who said your why should not be based on others because when your why is based on others that's a story and he challenged me he goes what is the why for you and i was like well i've never thought about a why for me i my since i'm little i've always thought my why was my parents he goes no what could What is it that if you didn't have in your life, it would not be Louisa? Like, what is the one thing that you feel you bring to the world? And that why just made me really think. And the more I thought about this, I don't know if I have the answer 100% yet, because I think it's an evolving question. But I think the two things that I may have shared with you is, I really feel my why in this world is, is happiness. You know, I, I love to laugh and I always say when on podcasts, I think we started, let's have fun. You know, I think mm-hmm. we were in a, especially this year, everybody's so uptight and between all the stuff that's going on around the world. I just feel like if we could let our inner child take over, sometimes we would walk around with a lot less stress. So for me, happiness and joy is huge and love. I think love is You know, I I have this right here as a constant reminder. This one sits on my desk Mm -hmm. and so does happiness. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I think for me, love and happiness are two things that are so important because I think when you do things from a place of love, um, we're able to make deeper connections. We're able to connect and listen. And um, we put our guards down to really try to hear out the other person. So as I'm now undercovering my why for me, which I have never done before, because I always thought my why was my parents and my daughter and, and just leaving a legacy behind for others. Uh, it's now uh, turning into love and happiness in addition to, of course, my parents and my daughter. I don't believe those things have to be mutually exclusive, of course, because, uh, you know, as you were describing the experience with your parents and how they sacrificed literally for you um, and your desire to reciprocate or give back and be there for them. um, That was clearly driven by love and happiness and joy, you know, so, so I, so, so maybe you're unveiling perhaps a deeper motivation, but it it seemed like it was there um, already based on, on just what I felt when you were sharing the story. So it's, um, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I also believe that before you can contribute to the love and happiness of another, then of course you have to contribute to your own you know, self-love, self-happiness, um, or yeah. you can't give it anything away. And I think that's something for me, which is maybe that comes with wisdom. Maybe we're, you know, we're getting of the age that we realize that, um, wait a second, you know, I, I have to, I have to be me before I can be a uh, something for someone else. So. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, coming, looping back to GTSE Plus, um, you're you're you've reinvigorated that because you've had a bit of a, a global pandemic as a little slight <laughs> speed bump, um, <laughs> shall we say, speed bump of humanity. Um, and it's no longer just you know st- tourism and sports. What is it that? Um, that your company does and, and who does it do it for? So, so like, like what, what is the, I guess the problem you solve or the itch that you scratch for, for yes. a company out there? So we want people to think of us um, as a company that helps spread very easily the concept of what their company is about. And the way we do that, I mean, we know that having 
a website that is actually uh, catching, right? That you, it's, we live in a society now that you have seven seconds to win somebody over. Seven seconds. This is what we're now as a society facing. And so you have seven seconds to make somebody go to your website and fall in love with your product. Then it's like, how do we, you have so many entrepreneurs that have an amazing business idea and an amazing concept, but they don't know how to express that to the world because they don't have the right website. They don't have the right SEO optimization. They don't have the right Google um, buys, the click, pay-per-clicks, all of these things that can make or break your business. And so, so many times I think entrepreneurs, especially uh, when they're starting out, they're dealing with their business plan, with investors, with their sales pitch and all of these items. And the most critical, one of the most critical parts is their presence. Their, your, your website is your presence, especially today, because we've gone to an, a digital world now more than ever. And so we want to make sure that your best presence, your website, you know, that when we do a, 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 an authority score, um, that's one of the first things we do for our clients is we do an authority score evaluation. And this is based on Google. This is not us. Google says between one, your com- your website is not very good. <laughs> one is being like bad. Mm-hmm. And a hundred, you have the best website in the world. Most websites that are really, really good are like in the 70th percentile. So I want to work with companies that are like 30 and under because I want to be able to say, let's take your website to the next level. Mm -hmm. And so really what we do is we, we, we do a whole website development. We do the SEO optimization, the retargeting, the pay per clicks, making sure that your website is making you money right? Like this is the way we're going to make money today. Um, and, and then that's one key part. Then of course, as I mentioned, public relations, um, it's so critical to have the right people that are sharing your story. And for me, PR is more than, um, paying for like, for example, we, we, our first client that we got uh, under GTSE plus is the restroom kit. And it's this, and now it's a, essential item because it's everything you need when you go to a public restroom. So it has the toilet cover seat, it has um, wipes, and it has toilet paper. And it's educating the end consumer that you're so you're putting yourself at risk when you go into a restroom. But if you have this item, you can actually be protect yourself, protect your family, because every time a, a bathroom is flushed, all the germs that spread out of the toilet go all over the toilet paper and everything in there. And then you go in, you blow your nose and you use the toilet paper. Guess what just happened? Mm. You just got contaminated. So what we did with PR was we um, did an event with the Mexican embassy during Hispanic Heritage Month. The Mexican community in New York was the hardest hit by COVID-19 and our client donated 500 of these kits to the Mexican community in New York. Um, it was on Telemundo. We had four minutes on Telemundo, which when you think about it, if I would have paid for that, it would have been $40,000, but it was a newsworthy event. So that's what we want to do with our clients is create these newsworthy events that we're giving back to the community. We're educating the community. And so that's the, the, the second piece for us. And then lastly, as I shared under GTS, GTSE plus, it's really helping the executive team and we are partnering with some amazing executive leadership um, teams out there that are going to help revamp and, and, and you're one of them, right? Like with your whole uh, simplicity scan, we, we, we want to partner with you and bring this to our clients. So I think it's uh, really doing a overall um scan on our clients to make sure that leadership is aligned, that they know where they're going, that they're very clear. Then let's make that website happen. Let's, you know, make sure they're, they're bringing in the revenue that they can make with the, with the, their websites and, and write social media ads and so forth. And then it's the whole PR. So, um, we're having a blast. I mean, we have our first client. They're doing amazing. I hope you guys will check mm-hmm. them out because it's something that, I mean, my life will never be the same after the restroom kit. I'm like, I cannot leave home without it. <laughs> but, what, what, um, what is the, uh, the the name or we can put it in the show notes, the restroom kit company? 
yeah, the restroomkit.com. <laughs> it can be so easy. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. So we will, uh, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Um, yeah. It's a brilliant idea. I just did an RFs scan of my website, abulian.com, and I got a, I got a, an incredible score of six. So I would so you're also, my perfect client. <laughs> I would also suggest to people, and I'll put the link in here in, in, in to the rfs.com website authority checker. And it's and it's also checking backlinks and 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 links. So it's so that's basically establishing authority. Does anyone else care what you're talking about? Um, I have not been working on on backlinks or even actually SEO. I've been really focusing on the podcast, but there's clearly some work to be done. The um it's funny you bring bring up the simplicity scan because uh, myself as as as, as they say, a, a waste-hating, customer-loving technologist, the the um, simplicity scan came really from, from a similar place that that, that you're helping um, other organizations with, and that's how we how we got in touch. Um, that before you start investing in the delivery capabilities, you know, even even websites and other things, but please get on the same page with the rest of your management team on why you're there you know, purpose, who is actually your customer? What are you actually going to do for them? What do you experience you're going to, you know, uh, provide them? What mindset you're going to bring? That's the left hand of the, of the canvas. And, and what I find is, particularly for startups, if you, at least you can get that clear, then the, the rest of it is tactics. The rest of it's really just yeah. execution. And uh, what I find, and I'm curious what your opinion is, oftentimes people, hey, let's go do something together. And then they go create a brand and create a website and they start stomping around without having really a clue why they're actually there together. Right. So it's, um, so what, what is the, what is the process that, um, so, so if someone went to RFs got a, got a, a low domain rating score, um, they're looking for help creating newsworthy events, you know, that they have an addressable market. Um, how would they engage you? And, and what would that, what would that journey look like? Yeah. So, um, Great question, because uh, th- at that point, they would contact me, um, Louisa at globaltourismsports.com, or you can find me on LinkedIn, Louisa mm. Mendoza, and you would send me a message, and we would have our first uh, exploratory call to understand where you are right now, you as a person individually, um, and where is your business? And then ultimately, where do you want to go, and how can we help you get there? Mm. Um, and and really having... Uh, you know, my clients for me, it's more than a client. It's a relationship. You know, my, my clients are, are family to me, my team. This is how I've always built my legacy. You know, um, my teams are my, my, my family. And so how can we help you really deliver the, the results that you want? And so we have that initial call and we do an entire um, assessment so we can really understand what are the needs and and what's the low hanging fruit? You know, um, it's so important to understand the low hanging fruit. So we kind of divide it in terms of where are you and your leadership team and where is your company, right? And 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 they're kind of they need to be separated because there's some um, leadership and personal things that we have to address before we can even look at the business. Now, once we're all aligned, we know what the North Star is, we, we know where the company wants to go and, and, and we're headed, we have a clear definition of what's the purpose and the alignments that the company wants to be in. Then we start really tackling the, the, the website and, and we do an entire, our team comes in, we evaluate the website, we tell you everything from this is why you're only, your authority score is a six, this is the keywords that show up when people look at your website and we give an entire presentation in terms of this is the things that we could do to take your website from a six, let's aim for a 30, then a 40, then a 50 and a 60 and let's get it up. Right. And, um, we do that. And then we, we, we build the website in many cases, in other cases, we work with what we have and we just, you know, depending on how much uh, the website needs help with. And then once we, we, we have that launch ready to go with the new website um, and we know that it's going to attract the right people and so forth. At the same time, we're, we're developing a PR strategy, um, especially with the U.S. Hispanic market. You know, it's a trillion dollar buying power here in the United States, as I mentioned. Um, and it's the fastest growing demographic in the U.S. So we create newsworthy events, uh, but not limited to the, the U.S. Hispanic market, of course. Um, so that's kind of the, the process and the most important thing 
you have to have fun in the process. If mm. you do not want to have fun, I am not your client. <laughs> I'm not the person to work with because for me, again, as I was saying, it's, it's like we, 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 we have so much going on. Like we let's enjoy the things we do. It, it, my clients, my weekly check-ins with my clients, it's like, okay, guys, we, we got to focus, <laughs> yeah. but having a, a great time. And, and at the end of the day, knowing my, my client's ultimate goal and how we're going to get them there, that's what puts a huge mm. smile on my face. And, and, and you've been having fun and smiling this whole time. So I, I'm, I'm sure people can see that and it's quite infectious. So a um, couple more questions and, and then I'm curious if you've got anything to fire back at me, but um, I'm, I'm going to be playful and fun with this and, and at Eric Patel's mm-hmm. expense because I've just looked up the uh, authority <laughs> score of Boston EXO. And I know you started doing some work there as, as uh, their chief business officer, I think. So you're helping them. So basically you're, you're bringing your, your magic sauce and your pixie dust to that discussion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, their their authority score is a three point five. So I think there's there's also some focus and some work to do, which is not un, not weird because it only started a couple months ago. And there's we're still, only five months old. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 it happened during during the crisis. And uh, yeah, um, if, if you go to uh, ebullient.com slash podcast slash Boston EXO, you will see other um, episodes with other, including Eric, including Max Zhang, who was this amazing. Um, student at, at Northeastern. He was in my team. He was in my team. <laughs> he was in the, yeah, I think one of the winning teams, I, I think. And um, just he was what, the winning team. <laughs> what, what, an, what an incredible group of people that is. And, and it's delightful to be to be near that conversation. Ebullient is a formal partner of Boston EXO, and we're still discovering what that means um, because there's, there's so much opportunity to improve things and there's so so many ways to collaborate so um, can you give it give me a few words on boston exo and then and then if you have anything that you'd like to toss back for us to wrestle with before we wrap up sure so boston exo um we were established this year five months ago with the key purpose of being able to help individuals and companies who were facing a crisis during the times we're living. And our goal was ultimately, how could we help startups? How could we bring hope to the youth? And how could we help companies to not shut their doors down, but to pivot? And with that, in the last five months, I think we were starting the company and at like two weeks later, starting a global internship, uh, 30 students, from over eight different countries and Max was one of the rock stars and and so many of our students. I mean, honestly, every single one of them was so inspiring. I would say to any company that's looking to launch, just hire interns, get, get inspired by their, their can do like, ah, there's just something about being around the youth that I love. And so really um, when, when Eric asked me to come on board, it was, a no brainer for me to say no to him because it was aligned with diversifying my portfolio. It was aligned with my why of giving back of bringing hope to others. Um, And I really started and Eric has a gift and, and I, and somebody else said it the other day in one of our advisory board meetings, because Eric is able to gather people from any walk of life, any country background to be a part of something that has just launched and to see a core team of like 10, 12 people that we have an advisory board, business partners all together. I think we're like 40, 50 people in. And I'm like, Eric, that's a testament to you because people trust you and, um, and we're having fun with it. You know, I, we're, we're, we're really coming down to what are our two, uh, you know, pillars of business. And we know that Boston EXO for education is one. We have a case study that obviously worked. You got to hear Max. I think he's our walking testimony. And then we are looking at Boston EXO for investors. So more to come on that there. Um, but again, just so thankful for the opportunity to, to be working with such a phenomenal group of people from all over the world who are not egocentric. The other day, uh, just yesterday, uh, Eric and I were talking about our company culture. And I said, you have created a culture of people that are not egotistic, that want to help, that genuinely care and support one another ideas. And we can agree to disagree, but 
there's just no drama. And I think that's been one of the keys of success to the company is that there's been zero room for drama. It's like metal to the pedal. Everybody has a purpose, a vision, and let's make it happen. So uh, I've learned a lot and mm. I hope to continue to contribute to such an amazing organization and let's get it to a fortune 500. That's the plan. <laughs> and, and um, yeah, the energy's there. So, so people want to learn more at bostonexo.com. So uh, Louisa, Louisa, thank you so much. Before we wrap up, is there anything that, um, that you've been wanting to throw back at me before we wrap up? Yeah, I would love to know. I mean, podcasting is something that, you know, so many people are now going into. And I'd love to hear from you. What has having your podcast meant to you and has it helped you with your business? And uh, what do you love most about podcasting? And what's the biggest challenge of podcasting? Um, lovely question. And I, and I would I would really celebrate for people that if they're thinking about starting a podcast, then, then stop thinking and start doing. I think that's the okay. biggest message because I am um, so delighted in the experience that I'm having and um, frustrated that I didn't start it five or 10 years ago, even though my dear friend, Kevin Flood, who I worked with many years ago, who, who, who listens to a lot of podcasts and he even has, he's in the UK, but he has a, um, um, well, he's all involved in the podcast scene on, on, on American classic cars. And so he was like, yeah, you know, I should have listened to him a long time ago. So if, if someone's <laughs> thinking of doing, uh, being involved in a podcast, then, then really just go for it. The, uh, when I researched, um, well, let, let me back up. The, the, the reason I'm doing the podcast is also related to, uh, like so many of us, how to contribute and share during this COVID Corona crisis because I've been working on the ebullient concept for a number of years, but it really, you know, needed to be born um, publicly during the crisis based on the very similar inspiration as Boston EXO. Meaning, hey, you know, I have some skills, I have some network, that um, some knowledge. How can I give that away and share that in, in a meaningful way for people? And that's where uh, we really accelerated with the simplicity scan um, that's taken, you know, they jumped a couple versions through the community, um, the simplicity sprint related to that. And then also there was the, uh, um, the podcast and, and uh, the, the biggest challenge. Um, well, there hasn't been a whole lot of challenges actually, because I think also my, my, my operational approach and, and also being a bit tech savvy and having a, uh, a lovely uh, friend in Christian Kaniga, who is, uh, he's the gentleman that I make movies with. He's the film director. He's mm. been so giving and, and caring and coaching me in the beginning and also helping with lighting, helping with sound, helping with the edit. Um, I really don't think I could do this without him, you know, for one thing. So I think there's also to have a bit of a, a, a teamship there. Um, I would wish that I could monetize it somehow, not necessarily for me, but so I can give more back to him. You know, so that was, that's sort of a, a big, a big motiv motivator. Um, the next stage of growth to answer that, I guess, is, is I've been consciously not worrying about analytics and subs subscriber counts because I don't want that to be the reason for this. Um, however, when I do look, I, I do see them grow. And now what I'm doing is playing around with... Um, how can I be a, a bit more structured in, in what I'm promoting? And so Movember is really the first, I don't even want to call it a test, but say, hey, you know, if we have a bit of a platform here, uh, Movember is something that's very meaningful for me. You know, I've had people in my family and friends that have had prostate cancer. That's when I started Movember a number of years ago. Hey, let's celebrate that. And um, next February, uh, someone else I know who's relaunching a book, that's being rewritten because of COVID. Um, we're in conversations with them to say, hey, what if we line up eight to 10 people on that subject? And then let's use that really to boost and, and promote the, the book. And so that, that's also an invitation to, um, to you because I'm already created a Boston EXO page. So, you know, with Eric, um, it hasn't been a structured month, but as I meet people who are involved in Purpose Alliance or Boston EXO or Open EXO, um, I attach them to those pages and those pages are going to grow and grow because that's really sort of a, a theme. Right. Um, so, so it is an invitation that if there is a, um, and it's, I guess it's not only to you, but to people who are listening, that if you have a 
a thing if you want to really celebrate sustainability and you have eight to 10 people um, and there is an actual call to action, um, then let's have that conversation. Let's line up those people and, and have this kind of conversation. And it's, it's so much fun for me and it's beneficial for people to have a platform to, to um, yeah, celebrate yeah. what they're doing. Love I think the, the, the thing that I don't know is, is if it's going to work is all of the advice said be very specific and niche and focused. And I decided that's not me. I'm a very generalist. Um, I celebrate my, um, my, my shiny object syndrome. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to do it for the widest possible audience and the widest possible, you know, guest. Um, so from Max, who's still a student up to, you know, I'm talking to a gentleman who's 81, who did not know what a podcast is, you know, oh, not, you know so I've had, I've had a, an artist and a designer recently who that was the first time they'd ever been on zoom. Um, I have a, a wonderful guy, uh, gift Lubele, who has created a, um, a digital platform for the, the informal trash picker community, typically ladies in South Africa who go around yeah. in, in the, in the, in the neighborhoods and pick up trash in the morning. And, and he created a platform for digital payments and, and in coordination so they can be much more safe. You know, there's so much just magic being created. Um, and that's why I do this. So, and if anyone's thinking, just start, it will suck in the beginning, honestly, because you're not going to know what you're going to do, but it doesn't matter. Just start, go. Start, so, just do it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so just do it. I love and, that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And yeah. Um, Louisa, thank you so much for joining. If, again, for everyone, um, she mentioned her email. I'll put that in the show notes. If you go to globaltourismsports.com, at least now uh, that's going, that's changing to GT GTSE+. Plus. Well, we'll still yeah. keep GTSE, Global Tourism okay. Sports and Entertainment, because we do know that sports and tourism will be back. But now mm. we just have a new vertical. So it's now sports, tourism, and everything else. <laughs> and everything, yeah, and there's so many people that are in need of your services to, you know, to, to connect their story with an audience. Um, yeah. and Boston EXO and of course uh, Louisa Mendoza on, on LinkedIn and I'll put that link there in the notes thank you. as well so thank you so much for joining oh no thank you this was fun learn more at ebillion.com slash podcast